Order 66 is often regarded as one of the darkest moments in the history of the Jedi Order, and continually has long-reaching ramifications. Even across the wider fabric of the galaxy, it gave way to the rise of the Empire, reformed the entirety of the Jedi Order as it came to be reconstructed by Luke Skywalker, and permanently altered the course of galactic history as we know it. Across multiple different Star Wars projects, we have been able to see several different perspectives of this dreadful day, as we learn where certain characters were during such a landmark event. Thus far, we've seen where just about every prominent survivor of the massacre was during the attack, and how they survived against the legions of clone troopers. The Bad Batch showed us where Kanan Jarrus was, was and how he survived. In the seventh season of Star Wars The Clone Wars, let us know where Ahsoka found herself during these events. And despite not being set during The Clone Wars, The Book of Boba Fett is no exception. Spoilers ahead for The Book of Boba Fett. In the most recent episode of The Book of Boba Fett, we get to see a flashback of Order 66 yet again. Only this time, it is told to us through the perspective of Grogu, as we get to see where he was when the Jedi Order fell. Now we learn presumably that he was actually at the Jedi Temple itself, likely a among the other younglings. We learn that he was in the Jedi Temple, and though we didn't see much, we see that he is being protected by three Jedi Knights, one of whom might actually hold more significance than it might seem on the surface. And today, we will be discussing that Jedi. So stick with us, Acolytes of the Galaxy, and let's explore the Jedi that we see defending Grogu, and delve into how significant this primary Jedi was in the history of the Galactic Republic. The Jedi in question who is protecting Grogu here is very clearly Sindralig, Master Dralig held many prestigious titles throughout his tenure as a Jedi Master. During the events of Order 66, Sindralig was the head of security at the Jedi Temple, as he had been throughout the entire Clone Wars conflict. He effectively led the charge and was the head of defense at the Jedi Temple, rallying the forces at his disposal and conducting the best defense fortification measures possible as the clone troopers, as well as the newly deemed Sith Lord Lord Vader, began their onslaught. But what more do we know about Master Sindralig, and what ultimately led him to this point in time, as well as what was his original fate in the original continuity? of Revenge of the Sith and prior. During his childhood, Sindralig was already a child prodigy in the Force, and was even taken under the direct wing of Master Yoda as Yoda's personal Padawan, a huge honor for any Jedi. Under Yoda, he would grow into one of the most gifted Jedi Knights of the era, specifically though, excelling in lightsaber combat. Master Dralig was widely regarded as one of the most skilled duelists in the Order, close to matching even the likes of Mace Windu and former Jedi Master Dooku, though the latter of the two are still often cited as the primary contenders for the title of the Order's best swordsman of all time. Sindralig, though, was directly below them. Sindralig's prowess with the lightsaber blade was so highly commended and respected that he quickly rose to the ranks and became one of the Order's premier teachers of lightsaber combat, which was important because this was during the form years of many of the most prolific Jedi Padawans of the era, such as Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, two of the most well-renowned Jedi Knights of their generation, two star pupils of none other than Sindralig himself. Master Kenobi was widely regarded as the Master of Sirisu, the all-defensive form, which was taught to him personally by Master Dralig. Obi-Wan is considered the best defensive combatant of his generation. Comparatively, Anakin Skywalker is not only regarded as one of the most powerful Jedi Knights in terms of force sensitivity, but his combat prowess as well, which led him to best in Count Dooku at just 20 years old, a student taken directly under the tutelage of Sindralig at the Jedi Temple, and whose teachings would one day ultimately be turned against him. The teachings of both these masters in terms of lightsaber combat can be traced back to the talented tutelage of Master Dralig, and the impact that he had on the young Jedi Knights when they were first starting out as lightsaber wielders, and many attributed the might of their combat prowess to the teachings teachings of Master Dralig himself. Master Dralig's talent in combat was so reputable that even the likes of Master Dooku regarded Sin Dralig as a threat to both himself as well as General Grievous, and Dooku was often cited as the single greatest swordsman of the Order, leading us to wonder how influential he might have been throughout the course of the Clone Wars if he was not often relegated to the Temple as the head of security forces, and just how impactful Sin Dralig could have become if he were allowed to join more active combat. The original canonical explanation of Sindralig's death was that he was one of the first Jedi executions orchestrated by Darth Vader. 
pre-suit Vader in fact, meaning that this is quite possibly Darth Vader at his greatest potential within the dark side, and potentially his most powerful. In the original source material, when a newly reborn Darth Vader is marching on the Jedi Temple, he comes across Master Drawlick, who puts up one of the most formidable fights of the Dark Lord's life, something that Vader would remember for the next two decades, and we actually see this in Episode 3, but more on that in just a moment. Being the head of security and a gifted battle practitioner, Syndralic posed a far more significant threat to the Dark Lord in terms of physical combat than most combatants that Vader would ever come to face in his long tenure as a Sith. Syndralic was in fact the battle master at the time of the Jedi Order, having mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat, including the Forbidden Form. However, Master Syndralic was a practitioner and specialist in Form 6, Nyman. Nyman, which was considered a style to be a jack of all trades, but master of none. However, Syndralic was to have believed to have brought this to its nth degree, meaning that instead of being a master of none, Syndralic was a master of all. This is why it took so many clone troopers to take him down in the Order 66 sequence that we see him in protecting Grogu. It also marks just how important Grogu was that Syndralic, as well as two other Jedi Padawans, were personally protecting the youngling. Meaning that of course something we already knew, Grogu holds extreme importance to the Jedi Order. Eventually though, even Syndralic would be bested by Darth Vader's new power, though the Book of Boba Fett seems to retcon this slightly, showcasing his death at the hands of a legion of clones as they open fire on him and the Jedi Knights that have rallied around him with the intent of protecting a young Grogu. In Revenge of the Sith, the hologram of Master Drawlig's death is the same hologram that Obi-Wan and Yoda find while infiltrating the Jedi Temple, finally uncovering the fullest extent of Anakin Skywalker's treachery, which might create a minor plot hole in the future. Though the battle is not drawn out in the movie, the novelization sheds more light on what took place here, and does more in depth of a job of illustrating Syndralig's combat prowess and the threat that he posed directly to Vader only to eventually see him fall. One explanation for this minor plot hole is that the clone simply wounded Master Drawlig and incapacitated him. This would allow him to get back up and be confronted by Darth Vader at some point down the line, and his injuries could have been a significant contributing factor in his defeat at the hands of Anakin. But this is just speculative as of now, and the scene is unlikely to amount to anything more than a minor inconsistency. As a seasoned battle master, Syndralic has seen his share of conflict throughout the years, and many of his most intriguing adventures took place within the temple itself. Any time throughout the Clone Wars that we've seen the temple come under attack or face any sort of security threat, it was Master Drolig that would answer the call. Syndralic was the lead investigator when Cad Bane broke into the Jedi Temple and stole a holocron, and he was assisted by Anakin. Skywalker in uncovering the truth behind the temple bombing that would ultimately see Ahsoka Tano leave the Order. Syndralic's connection with his students of the Order gives him a network of respected knights, and ensures that he is one of the first to jump into protection of the younglings when danger presents itself, regardless of the cost as we see here with Grogu. When Captain Rackham Seer attacked the Jedi Temple on behalf of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, his first act was to take two Jedi Temple Guards and secure the safety of the present younglings, sequestering them within the Temple Guards before ultimately joining Master Windu and Kenobi as they pursued the suspect to the roof of the temple, where Captain Seer would ultimately kill himself by jumping from the temple roof. Though Master Syndralic's time outside of the temple during the Clone Wars was limited, the significance that he held within the sacred grounds of Coruscant are not to be understated, as he is one of the most influential knights in the Jedi Order that many would argue is deserving of more screen time and overall coverage and recognition. In terms of the other two Jedi that we see protecting Grogu, their names are Jedi Padawans Wee and Bean, who were apparently with Master Master Syndralic when he faced down the clone troopers, as well as were presumably killed by Darth Vader in the hologram footage. But anyway friends, what are your thoughts on this, and what are your thoughts on Master Syndralic and his story, and what do you feel about this retcon that the Book of Boba Fett undertook with Syndralic being killed by the clones instead of Lord Vader? As always my friends, I would love to hear your thoughts and comments on this down below. May the Force be with you, and have a great day.